things he leaves out, I can tell you. This is kind of odd though, because the video seconds showed it already above the city. But yeah, whatever. So this is Esther City, you can see right arc, left arc, left spoke, right spoke. So yeah, the left and right arc are called the two, the, the outer skyway, to, all in one. And yeah, we're gonna have a timer again. So this game really has a lot of timed uh, stuff. This is one of them. And at some point it's gonna be low enough above the city to actually be boarded. Don't know why it's turning all the time, it's a fucking pillar, but... This one is such a mean, sh mean one, I think. Because they show you this crossing, but I think the actual contact point is one screen to the side, left or right of it. The third one's really easy to find because, well, shopping mall, and you have lots of time. I'll explain the whole procedure to you as well, so don't worry. <laughs> we know that you want to talk more. You'll always want to talk more. What happens if we talk to him now? As soon as he walked over there. The cool kid is not good bad here. Oh my god. Yeah, indeed, he never does. Mm, about Lunar Pandora, please tell us. Because this is the things I really want to tell you and that are really important to. Well, you can have the information now, so why not take it? So yeah, <coughs> there's the tear of the moon that's monstrous falling as a big drop, that's the name, from the moon to earth, or whatever this planet is called. And the Pandora has an effect on the moon. And yeah, tears point is, I don't know if the t if I don't think the tear of the moon is always dropping at the same place. Because I think I've read that the big crater in the central continent was also the the, the result of one tier of the moon, but apparently there's a tears point. This tears point this is where we found the ring of Solomon. This is where the next tier of the moon will take place. For some reason, there's this shrine-like thingy built there, and the lunatic Pandora being there will actually maximize their effect to uh, provoke such a uh, the tier of the moon. So if the lunatic Pandora reaches that point, it will uh, the 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 gravity and or attraction or whatever it is that the monsters feel towards our planet is increasing much much more. So they're dropping down early. Actually, trying to get some information about the second one above from him. An overpass cross street on the right side. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so not really many new info. So actually, the lunatic Pandora is a giant shell.
built around a crystal pillar. And this crystal pillar is what's having all the effects. Little detail that's how that's well not never never really mentioned, but maybe here. Yeah, exactly. An enclosure for the pillar, crystal pillar. Oh, Lunar Cry. Now it's called Lunar Cry. I call it as... Is it really called... Oh yeah, it's not Tear of the Moon, it's Lunar Cry. Very sorry. So, yeah. Um, to this point, yeah, precisely. It's 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 been determined by scientists. It's not always the same. And technically, the crystal para ca the genetic controller cannot go there, but as we know, the Galbadians they probably found a way around that. So yeah, everything very myth mythical, but the problem at hand is we'd love to stop the Lunatic Pandora from reaching Tira's point. And to do that we need to enter it, because we cannot fight a three miles high building, flying building. And yep, timer starting. We can press uh, square to see the next contact point. And yeah. Thrilling music. Stop talking. Also, there are now fights going on here with the, from the with Gabadians. And those things are now broken. But we can walk the pipes. Oh, you can see it in the background. Um, the, f the earlier you enter the Atlantic Panorama, the more you get done, usually. And I th this is where the knowing the layout of the city is comes in really handy, because for example, this first spoke I was just about to enter actually uh, um, would lead me to the Odin Laboratory. No wait, I'm coming from the Odin Laboratory. So lead me to the Presidential Palace. And I need I I want to get to the overpass in the middle of the city. So I got two. Actually, I think I'm gonna go the totally other way. So I can go to the presidential palace and then go round and about from there. This sh this would probably work out barely. Let me through. But I'm gonna take another way. I'm gonna go to the city entrance. Yeah, I know. And from there, when we went through the shopping mall, we've already always past those stairs. And yeah, left to the stairs is actually the area where we want to go. So as you can see, two minutes have already passed, so we have three more, and if you so if you wanna um, if you don't exactly know where to go, this reaching the first contact point is a really, really close call. Yeah, whatever, kill it. Oh, it's dead, great. A dragon fin. I think we needed that for something. Ah, I can also check that draw point now. Because the thing with the contact point... Oh, Kuraga, really. Uh, the thing with the contact point points is the following. The contact point is the whole screen. And I think it's this one. Or the one left. Yeah, so it's this screen. So if we wait now, at this point, 
until 15 seconds, uh, 15 minutes are left on the timer, nothing will happen. We need to enter the screen while the time is in the contact time. So we actually need to wait. Oh, we're up there. Oops. Uh, yeah, now please go. Oh, that's one I can talk to. What? Oops. What's he mean? Oh, yeah, that's right. What's that supposed to mean? And my sweets are running out. That's bad. Oh, wow. What a ferocious back attack. Bob. I am. I am in awe. Can I talk to you? <coughs> what? <coughs> okay, really sorry about that. But that was... That was a horrible cough. Probably gonna cut that, so... <coughs> <coughs> Whoa, okay. Really sorry about that, but... Yeah, really sorry about that, but that was a horrible cough. Which is simply... which I couldn't just choke down. And which also killed the remaining minutes we had. So yeah, now we get a warning. First contact point. Bop, bop, bop. And if we now enter the screen, we actually enter a different screen, of course. Which is uh, this. So this is one wall of the Lunatic Pandora. And yeah. Of course, luckily, there is a door just as we pass by. <coughs> which the Galbadians are so kind to open for us. I think the units they send against us here so weak because after confronting us so many times they are severely understaffed with the military force it's just simply drained or still searching for alone so yeah the door still open so now we can jump in easy one for Zell Idea probably levitates over there. And we're inside the Lunatic Pandora. Meteor. Oh yeah. So yeah, this is probably my app. Also one of my most favorite soundtracks in the game. Because it just fits the impressiveness of this construct. And also its its strangeness. It it just fits perfectly. So yeah, let me check up locations. I usually don't play by the book, but um, yeah. So uh, let's. I don't know. Mm. Actually, let's not take. Yeah, precisely. Taking lift one. Oh, there's another drop point. Taking lift one first is probably one of the biggest mistakes you can do here because there is a certain condition waiting at different locations that will end our visit at, and th that could end our stay here and I wanna pa I don't want to meet those so I'm using the map to navigate around them and then I'm taking putting the book aside again so don't worry I'm not just reading a guide here this is actually the except for looking up certain items or stuff this is the first time I'm consult consulting them Actually, for your pleasure, because I don't think it's interesting to, if you, for you to see me uh, wander around aimlessly, without any clue where to go, for I don't know half an hour or something. That's just not enjoying. So yeah, the Red Pandora is quite big and quite confusing. You have these three lifts and. Uh, let me see. Yeah. 
and lots of junctions. So I actually have no clue where to go now, I just try going here. Yep, that's something. Oh, we're here! Another screen. And we, as you can see, this is a dead end. So, yeah. God, I'm actually still waiting for the big reveal. Holy shit, this can't be. Ugh. Yeah. Of course, the enemies here aren't really interesting. They're just the usual Galbadian military type encounters. With these ones being probably the most dangerous of them all. Bob. Boring. <coughs> We're also kinda lacking. So the, the, the fights take a bit longer without squad superior attack power. But it's still not that bad, so yeah. Apparently we need to go here. Ah, uh, yes. We know this type of surrounding, don't we? I mean, not exactly this, but look here. This round block. And lift number three. Oh, great. Oh, oh. easy to miss these stairs. <coughs> Sorry. So yeah, you probably guess it by now. This is the place that we visited with Laguna in our second vision? Really long ago, where, where he dropped all the keys and fumbled with all the doors and... Well, not all the doors. We missed one. Confused, nice. And yeah, all the things that we did there. Finding both keys and fumbling the doors. Dropping the boulders. This is all to open up our pathways in this part of the game. As you can see, two of the doors are open. And going in there we find... Oh, well, yeah, this was the door that's uh, the easiest to find. Which was... Uh, this was the one that... Uh, they told us to uh, open. And this is the one I actually... I couldn't open anymore. And I don't know what's behind there. If we if we're really unlucky, the behind there is a Rosetta Stone. But we also got a power generator. Which is a very special item which you can use for a lot of things. So you as you can see it's uh, a tech item for crystals. I think you can also turn it into something. I don't know what. So I'll just have to check. Time ahead. Hmm, strange. I'll just go through all of them now. Oh yeah, we can make a Marlboro Tentacle into Bio, by the way, but this is a total waste. Because Bio is totally not a useful spell. That's, however, quite useful. <coughs> um... <coughs> But Marlboro, Marlboro Technicals are really important for crafting weapons and... Yeah, well, that's even worse. For crafting weapons and... Oh, oh, oh my god, this is a thing. And we can make it into Pulse Ammo, which is not only the strongest of all ammunitions. <coughs> Stop fucking coughing, eh? This is horrible. But we also need it for Squall's ultimate... Weapon. So this is kind of a hard choice because as I can, um, 
you can very, very, very rarely steal them from... Uh... Help me. Oh, there's something. You can very rarely steal them from the blitz... blitzes? Blitz enemies? In Sentra. But, as I said, it's very, very rare. So this technique for Quistis is quite... Uh, Quite an elusive one. It's not her ultimate, but I think it's a really good technique. Until we get her ultimate one. <laughs> I think I'll just save it for now. I mean, um, as long as we don't have the other parts for Squall's weapon, we don't need to. We know we don't need to choose, anyways. And I think there was this, this energy crystal and, and the star shard, or what they're called, which we. I don't even know if... I, th I think you can get them at this point of the game. I think you can actually create the ultimate weapons. If you... if you know... It, oh. oh! Hi! Uh... You can... <coughs> create the weapons on disc 1. If you do it... If, if you level really much so the enemies drop the right items and everything like that. But it's really, really uh, complicated and totally not worth it because, well, yeah, it's, I mean, why? On, f on City 1 and 2, you're face planting most enemies anyway, so why even bother upgrading your weapon already to the most if you can do it rather easily on City 3? Or at least much easier. And GFs are learning things. Let's check on them. Oh, oh, missed something there. Oh, missed it here too. Oh, I've, I've been really slacking at this point. Well, oh yeah, everyone else still fine. So yeah, we got the doors, we got the boulders, we got the keys. I think the key was the last door back there. Oh, there's a pathway as well. Ooh, the love love GG. Uh, G. I, I usually call it love love GG just because double love double G. It's basically an item that increases the compatibility with every oops no with every GF by 10 or something I mean it's rare but I really don't see it being that much worth that much or, or useful at least and I don't even know if you can make it into something something good so let's just keep it for now so yeah. There was a second door, the second key. Um, I think the two boulders that connected lift one and lift two and three, and uh, the the pathway to the doors was were for the two um, bombs. So now we can go here. Move. So yeah, you can basically see this inner pillar where we just came from, the crystal pillar. And then the outer shell where that was artificially constructed. This here. And apparently in the f uh, around the time... No wait, not around the time of Timovo. Laguna was part of the Gardanian forces that scouted on the Astarians while they were excavating the, the, the crystal pillar. Back then it was still apparently lying sideways because you might have already noticed that many things that were pathways back then are now traversed by ladders or... Yeah, the doors were are now walls and were floor back then, so... Apparently things have been tilted. But back then the crystal pillar lay, laid, on the, laid on the ground. And now stands upright. Maybe they even built the Lunatic Pandora there and then flew it back to Astar to research it. 
Because, let's face it, this pillar is fucking big and you can't really transport, easily transport a thing like that. Someone's really not liking me recording today. So yeah, uh, does this... do the lifts have multiple levels? I'm not even sure. Oh, it's driving down, I think that's a no. So yeah, we are back in the main hall now. Um, I'm not even sure if you're just supposed to leave or if we have to run into one of the things I've been avoiding. This was the Kuraga. And this was where he came from, right? Uh, what? Meteor again? I did draw from this in the first time, wasn't it? Didn't I? Nope, no way out. So, we're gonna take lift one now. <coughs> first the cups, now the sneeze. Well, yeah, I, I am currently, uh kind of recovering from a cold, but didn't expect it to be this bad as soon as I start recording. So yeah, as you, so yeah, lift ones and lifts one and uh, lifts lifts two and three are connected or connectable with the boulders. Lift one is a separate area, and wasn't this the area where Laguna t tapped one of the rocks? Yep, it was. Speed Junction Scroll teaches 1GF the ability Speed Junction. You can buy scrolls for normal junctions from pet shops. The Speed Junction Scroll of course is kind of more valuable because Speed Junction is quite a rarer ability. And yeah, ooh, this is looking cool. So yeah, now you can see the the crystal pillar and all how it's linked to the shell around. And I think this is a really cool screen. <coughs> Sorry. I mean, look at this. This is awesome, right? Um, I'm still pressing down, so apparently I cannot go there, which is really badly done because you virtually, literally can't see anything. But considering that it's part of the shell, it's probably uh, an entrance for a later. Uh, let me not. The later you get into the Learning Condor, you got different start points. Maybe this is one of the later starting points. So yeah, we got just one way left to go now, which is uh, here at this, uh, precisely this one. Oh yeah. Surprise. So yeah, this definitely does not look like a body and technology, to be honest. Much greener, sleeker, and elegant. Alien. And it also has some severe power. We end up fine. Yep, flying. So yeah, we've spent quite a while in the Light Panora. This is the the area the, the building we could not enter, the Witch's Mausoleum. We did not succeed in stopping the Lunatic Pandora. 
So now it's reaching Tyr's point. This doesn't look ominous, I don't know what does. So yeah, this is basically a great red beacon for the Lunar Cry. Come and get me right now, right here. Meanwhile in space, I literally do not know why they chose this music for space. But they did. Spacesuit, controller A and B. This is like familiar faces 1 to 4 in F FH. Check up on Adel. Isn't Adel dead? Like 17 years ago, vanished, stuff like that. Don't know, backstab. So yeah, this is the Astor's Luna base. Luna side base. Luna base, I don't know. A really cool looking thing, I think. Slowly rotating to emulate gravity. Or maybe just using uh, artificial gravity, gravity generators, I don't know. Don't think it's ever explained. <coughs> This is a horrible light. Can you please stop that? Why is the door tilted to the side? Why is there no gravity? Okay, I can... Oh my god. So I can walk. This is up, this is down, this is left. Renoa? Can I talk to Renoa? No. Then talk to Sophie. Can't talk to her either. 
Get some cash. Into space. Can't talk to him either, holy shit. Need to talk to him. <coughs> Dude, what the hell? You see her? And the first thing that goes to your head is, wow, how old is she? Is she legal? And then you're, oh, she might be that. I don't care. Is she a is she 18 yet? I mean, what what the hell is wrong with you? How are you in the medical staff? Creep, go away. I don't want to see your face ever again. Uh, talk to you, talk to you. No. We need to carry Renoir again. So Pete is the one in the, in the white, uh, don't want to say dress, but, you know. So yeah, Squall carrying her again. I need to do a break again, I can't believe it. Oh, can't can't pause now. So yeah. Gotta wait. Ah, I can pause now, so uh yeah. Be right back.